There are two aspects to Pico 8 that confuse people. And in fact, not just Pico 8, but lots and lots of different programming languages. These are the difference between maps or backgrounds, which quite often work on a grid system, and pixels, which is the correct screen measurement that's running around on a screen. If we look at this particular um, program that's running here, you see that there's a red cube running around the screen. But what's important is this red cube, this top left corner of the red cube, is measured using the pixels that run across and down. There's 128 that way and 128 that way. So this x, y value here might be 40 across and 105 down or something like that. But in addition to these, if I do it in yellow, the entire game is divided, very badly drawn by me, into grids like this. And these grids each have a tile in. Okay, so there are grids all over. And in fact, if my grids are 8 by 8, then there are, running that way, 16 squares, and running this way, 16. And one of the hardest things to reconcile in terms of doing this sort of stuff is if I know the x and y here of my block, what on earth is the actual grid reference of that block? In other words, I know it's at 40, 105, but which tile is it sitting on? And so this video is just going to look at converting these values into these values. In other words, turning pixels into a grid. Okay, and in fact, turning the grid back to pixels. All right, so that's what we're going to look at today. How on earth do you turn from one to another? Now, as you know, in Pico 8, you have your Pico 8 screen, which runs across like this and from top to bottom, which is 128 pixels running from zero to 127. We all know this, and it's the basis for the pixels on the screen. And each pixel is a dot like this all the way across the screen. But you also know, if I um, come into my code over here um, on this one, and press escape and we go up to the um, sprites over here. You know also that a sprite itself, if I just clear this stuff off the screen a second, if I draw a sprite, let's say I've got myself a little um, box like this. Okay, there's a, there's a sprite of some sort. That particular sprite is eight pixels across. And I could use that sprite to design some sort of background. Okay, so there's a background sitting there. Okay, like that on a map. So I've got a background and I've got a map. So we've got two different things um, on display. If I start doing some coding here in a function draw, then what I can do is I can draw the map. Map 0, 0, 0, 0, 16, 16. Okay, I'm just going to clear the screen before I do that. So there's the map that we've just drawn, okay? And what's important here for us to remember is that each of these bits here is eight pixels, whereas the entire map across is 128. And that means the entire map across is also 16 of these tiles, okay? So the grid is a 16 by 16 grid. Now that's assuming that you're graphics are a one by one pixel but once you start creating things that are different size in terms of the pixel size and things like that hopefully your coding skills are of a level where it doesn't actually matter what i'm going to be talking about is a very general idea we're going to have 128 pixels across the screen 16 grids across the screen okay and it's often very very useful to know where you are this is pixel naught we then have all the pixels across this sprite up to pixel 7. Okay, and that's the first grid there. Then we go from pixel 8 all the way to pixel 15. Okay, so if I write these down, we've got 0 to 7, and then we've got 8 to 15, 
and then we would have 16 to 23 and 24 to 31 and so on like that okay now this is in terms of if we're thinking about the x direction here so we've got x running along like this this is the first tile in the grid so it's tile zero this one is the second one so it's tile one because we're, we're counting from zero here so I need some sort of mathematical way of saying if my player is somewhere between 0 and 7 pixels I'm in the first grid which is zero if my player is somewhere between 8 and 15 pixels I'm in the first grid if it's somewhere between 16 and 23 I'm in the second and uh, sorry the third which is number two the fourth which is number three and so on like that so is there a way of working this out well there is there really is and it's fantastically simple all I need is a function called floor and if I take a floor of the pixel value which is say the x value of the character divided by 8 because 8 is our width here if I take a floor of x over 8 well 0 over 8 is 0 1 over 8 is 1 8 2 over 8 is 2 8 3 over 8 is 3 8 and so on the floor value takes it down to the nearest integer so these if you imagine here go from 0 over 8 to 7 over 8 all of those are less than 1 so they're all rounded down to 0 here these ones go from 8 over 8 to 15 over 8 in other words they go from 1 to 1 and 7 eighths so they all get rounded down to 1 and so on like that so it's very very easy to find out which tile you're sitting on by using this floor function and dividing your pixel location of your sprite by 8 8 being the width and as I say if you're messing around with tiles that are of a bigger width then you might want to change that so let's see this actually happening in in reality shall we so that we actually know what's going on so if I come back to our code over here then we can start looking at various bits and pieces okay so I've drawn a grid on the screen I'm not too fussed about that grid now um, I'm gonna move away from that grid and instead I'm just going to draw the sprite on the screen and I'm gonna draw the sprite to the X and a Y location and it's um, sorry, sprite one at an X and a Y location so I need to declare an X and a Y so let's put them in the middle X is 63 Y equals 63 okay and we'll have a function update and our function update is just going to move the usual sort of thing if button nor then x equals x minus one end okay and we're going to have several of those for each direction so i'll just paste them in as you know all programmers copy and paste you don't type in things all over again it's just part of the general laziness of being a programmer here we go so x is x plus one these are going to change to y's okay and that bottom one is going to be y plus one okay and so hopefully now if i run it there's my character moving around the screen okay so where is it well let's create two new variables called grid x which i'll just set to naught and grid y which i'll also set to naught and in function update i want to find those so grid x is just equal to the floor of x over 8 okay and grid y is just equal to the floor of y over 8 and just to prove that things are working okay up here in the top of the screen I will print grid x comma and grid y and I'll put it at 5 5 in white so there we are you can see the grids moving so if I move to the top corner of the screen up here I'm in grid 0 0 now I'm in grid 0 1 0 2 0 3 0 4 like that going this way you can see the x value increasing and so on like that and if I move off the screen of course it keeps counting because it's not actually messing around or doing anything so is that really true well here's a little bit of fun um, why not do this as well what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle in and I'll do it in red 
and I'm going to take it from grid x times 8. So in other words, I'm because rect takes pixels as its location, I take the grid x, which has taken the floor value, and I multiply it by 8 to give me a pixel value. But it will give me a pixel value of, this, of the grid I'm in. Okay, and I'll do the same here, grid y times 8. Okay, and then I need, because it's rectangle, I need to put an x2 and a y2 in place. This is um, not great coding, by the way, folks. You shouldn't really put all of these calculations into your function draw. But um, in this instance, I am plus 8. So there we go. And I'll draw this grid in red, let's say. Okay, so if I run this now, that's the square I'm in. You can see I'm still in 7, 7, all the way around, 7, 7, 7. And now it moves 7, 6, like that. Okay. So you can see. Now what's important, what's interesting here, aha, you're all saying, it's looking at the top left corner, and it is. If you see on this, it's the top left corner that triggers it, because in our sprites, this point here is the x, y location of our sprite. So if I press escape and run, it's that little square there that's triggering things, okay? So, we could, if we wanted to, say x plus 4 and y plus 4, put those in brackets, so that the calculation is done in the correct order. Okay, and that then works on the center. Okay, so now you can see you've got a grid which is a little bit more potentially aligned with where you want. Okay, so it's possible to move out of the grid all the way around. Like that before we get to anything okay so we can do various bits like that I'm gonna leave it top left um, just so it's fairly straightforward okay so that's how we can calculate the grid reference for something and that's a really really useful way of doing things all right happy programming